Do not fall, please. <laughs> good? Hey, guys. Hello. Welcome back to the channel. What's up? It's been so long. It's been literally How long? so long. We took a break, I guess, for this holidays. <laughs> We're not supposed to, <laughs> but supposed no, to. we literally did. Like, yeah. but we had a video that was supposed to come out. Yeah, we had before Christmas. Things. Yeah, it was literally filmed. Yeah, a month ago, it was supposed to come out, and then we were gonna come out with our New Year's video. But mm -hmm. you know, Should this year, I want us to be prepared for like all the holidays. Like we no, kept sending each other like these podcasters that were dressed up for each and every holiday. The girls' bathroom, Sophia and Chinzia. They do They're a great so job good. at like. They clearly have a budget. They right? clearly oh, have a budget. They definitely do. We, we do try. Not, but you know what? Amazon. Inshallah, one day we will. Yeah. And then also, like, we can we can do it ourselves. This Valentine's Day is coming up. We better both show up as Cupid or something. Like, seriously, <laughs> like we should come and like. We should definitely wear pink or red. Yeah, pink or red. For and, sure. Like and like do something like put yeah. hearts on our face or something. Pink pillows too. Okay. You know, like yeah. just set a vibe. Yeah, That'll we be should really like cute. we should try to be like more intentional with everything coming up because honestly, in my core, I'm such a festive girl. Yeah. Like I love festivities. Did you do anything special for the holidays? Family get this together. Family, this year though, I told all my family it's a pajama party and everybody came in pjs and it was oh that's cute. really cute and we all got like matching pjs so like i went and got the game tattoos like my whole family like we all got matching pjs i was your idea tiger it was my idea and i love that like i literally just like said guys come in pajamas and everybody showed up in matching pjs and it was too cute and all their photos look really nice that's we really do a cute theme every year yeah theme. that's really cute yeah. maybe next year i'll do that too did you ever put up your christmas no tree? no are you serious no i didn't be so ashamed. yeah this christmas was just not Christmas thing. You know what though? For I me, think it's life. Like there's so many. Like as you get older, things get less exciting, and you're like, "What the fuck is the point?" Yeah, of anything. And I get it. And then, yeah. when, and then on top of that, like there's crises in the world. It's like, you know, like yeah. there's nothing. If you really want to get into it, there's nothing to be happy about. <laughs> <laughs> No, like, that's really it. Real. That's really Why it. Why am I smiling and laughing? How some, dare I? Some years I'm more festive than others. This year was not. Last year I was. Last but, year you were. Yeah, yeah I don't you know. It just Christmas depends tree. on my mood, to be honest. Yeah. And also depends on the weather. If it's not snowing out, I'm not doing anything Christmas related. But it's, it's really Christmas. hard for me. It's really, really hard for me. Christmas. It wasn't snowing this year. Oh, you said if it's not If it's snowing, not. Because it's not a white Christmas. I only like white Christmases. So. I get that. Have you been tubing? I have. I took my cousin's tubing for the first time. It was so fun. I need to yeah. go skating next. Mm -hmm. I haven't gone skating in years. Skiing, all of those winter skiing activities. Is like so you dangerous. really have to find a way to to make winter exciting. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're in your crib. Like it's freezing out. It's depressing. It's gray outside. Yeah. So you really have to like do the winter activities. Did you see that TikTok of like I? I know how white people stay happy during the winter. Like, they do all these activities, yeah, tobogganing, it's like, so true. skiing. They, they, like, they stay active during yeah. winter, so... It doesn't, like, the cold doesn't keep them inside. Yeah. They actually go Enjoy outside. It. And you know what it is? And it's just, like, you just have to dress for the weather. If you... <laughs> it's, like, it sounds so obvious. Like, yeah. literally just put on layers. And then you will actually be able to yeah. enjoy the cold because it's not that bad when you're outside. Mm -hmm. Like skiing, genuinely, skiing? every time I go skiing, I'm scared to break Bro, both legs. Bro, ankles, yeah. Like, I feel like I'm not going to be okay. Because, especially for us Habisha women too, we have our very, our ankles are, and bones. our wrists, very breakable. Yeah. So, it's yeah, kind of I'm just too weak. Even. I feel like I'm not built for it, you know? Because like, it's I too try. painful. I do the baby, the baby hill. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's literally all I so can do. Fast. It's so scary. It is so scary. Why is it so fast? <laughs> and when you I can't see, stop it. No, I it's can't. out of control. No, you know what? When I really, really got upset the last time I went to Blue Mountain to go skiing last year with my friends, I fell. Right, like yeah. we are all like, at, like we're, when we're going, like there, it's so much going on, and we're all new skiers, so we didn't really know what we were doing. Mm -hmm. So we had no time to wait for each other. It's not like, oh, let's wait for her to come down. Let's go all together again. No, we were all kind of doing our own thing. Yeah. Right? So whatever. And there's so, no one to like teach you. No, there. it's really everyone yeah. for themselves. Yeah. So I literally. went and I go down. I fucking I <laughs> fall so bad. I'm rolling down <laughs> the hill. Tumbling down is so fucking embarrassing. Down the hill. I yeah. even hit like a kid like like a little like i, I took him down the with kid. you he was fine though right like he's a little kid he got he got up my skis were on as i was falling you know what i mean so oh my god i got stuck like i because when you have skis and you try to get up you can't get up because it's so slippery and every heavy. time you try to get up bro and heavy you try to get up you yeah. fall again the amount of people who saw me struggling to get up i yeah. actually gave up and i lied down there <laughs> i was literally like Looking at the sky, yeah. I was literally lying down there for maybe five to seven minutes. That is way too long. That's way Nobody too long. Nobody came to help me. Yeah. Nobody came. These two black guys came to help me. They, like, and honestly, I don't mean to make it about race, but they actually <laughs> said, I don't give a fuck about you at all. 
the only two black get guys came to help up. me. Get up. Get like, up. And it's so crazy because you're, you're really beside like two, three-year-olds skiing mm-hmm. and they're doing They're doing fine. so because they've been doing it their whole life. They're learning. So they're tiny. I went to like a ski, a ski resort. Yeah. Okay, okay cool. So <laughs> it's like beside Kitchener. It's I think a really ski. big one. I think so. Okay, okay. And then you know how they have like the 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 rides that you go on with your skis to get to the big the lift. Not the ride, the it's lift. Ride. <laughs> I've never done it before. Okay. No one was there to yeah. help us get on, to yeah. help us get off, teach us how to do it. Yeah. So and there's no like it's not safe. It's absolutely like, you not can safe. literally slide yeah. off and die. Like, not even kidding. Yeah. So it <laughs> went too high for me. So I started like panicking and stuff. Like we went on it. We're sitting on it. Our skis are very heavy. So it's like kind of weighing us down too. Yeah, yeah. Have you been on one yeah, before? Yeah. So it takes you really, really, really high. And then when you get off, it doesn't stop. You just have to get You off. have to jump yeah. the fuck <laughs> off or yeah. you're going back down. Yeah. Like, so yeah, I had to like literally throw myself to the floor. Mm-hmm. And then I was like causing traffic because they had to get, other yeah. people had to get off. It's just like a very stressful. It's a very dangerous mechanism they have any new year's resolutions how do you feel about this new year's i don't like the age that i'm turning but other than that it's whatever it's it's the most serious you know what though it's only gonna get more serious like i know (laughs) bro like we are really um, adults no it's for real adults for real adults and i know it's time to like go with covid and they stole our years and everything like i personally will not (laughs) like you really came and snatched three years of my youth yeah yeah no yeah i'm not gonna get over it but whatever like yeah we're growing older but i feel like something clicked in my brain this year one the importance of health like something is if you don't do it now i have like an alarm in my head where Mm -hmm. it's like when when are you gonna do it then yeah it's only gonna get harder and really and truly nothing in life is easy so it's like while i'm the most able-bodied i am right now i'm Mm -hmm. like i need to really push myself go to the gym Build my strength, become more flexible, like mm-hmm. eat healthy, like all these things. Because I don't know, like I feel like I'm gonna, like it's, I'm really gonna thank myself later on. Like there's literally an alarm in my head every single day. Like I started doing yeah. yoga like more often, and like I'm stretching. No, stretching feels like, so fucking good. Like really stretching your hips so as a much. woman, you need to do it every freaking Bro. day. And I'm someone who like holds a lot of stress and tension in my hips because every time I do it, the amount of like relaxation yeah. and like relief that i feel yeah. it's just like i need to do this i literally do it every day but yeah going to the gym and just like going to the gym because yeah. remember i used to do a lot of home workouts you're very much home going workout. to the yeah. gym love that one it's so different everyone is working out yeah. so what are you doing here you need yeah. to work out and, and once you learn how to like use the machines yeah and you learn how to like actually start lifting real weights mm-hmm. you get stronger and you feel good about yourself and it's like it's motivating. It's really motivating. Somatic therapy. What's up? So, like, I tried talk therapy, right? Like, my beef with therapy is, like, I do believe in therapy, but my problem is that I I have not found a therapist that I actually think understands my issues. <laughs> like That's sad. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, I feel like I'm someone who has done so much self-reflection already. Like, I've read a lot of books, and, like, I've, I've done a lot of research on the issues that I have, just, like, in my life. You know what I mean? So, when I meet a therapist, I feel like I need to... You need to know more than me. Up. To know more than me, and then I need to catch them up. And like, if I don't believe that you actually know more than me, yeah, I'm not gonna respect you yeah. anymore, and I'm gonna actually just shut down. I'm gonna be like, I'm actually not giving you my money because mm-hmm. one fifty an hour is a lot of money. To tell know? me what I already know about and, myself, bro. I spent so much money on one therapist where she was just like kind of repeating things I already knew, and then one time she told me something that was like wrong. It was like actually and oh like incorrect i was like no i can't yeah so then i, started, I know someone who had a similar experience you know too what I mean? it pissed me off so much because i'm like damn i'm really giving you money and i don't feel heard with a therapist yeah. so i got pissed off so yeah I'm like, i started looking at other things and stretching is actually called somatic therapy where mm-hmm. you're like stretching and breathing and getting into deeper stretches specifically like your hips and stuff because it holds all the tension mm-hmm. there's a book called um the body keeps score mm-hmm. and it's so good because it's like it really explains like where like, what like, women hold yeah, what women onto hold. trauma like, and yeah yeah and like i feel like that has been kind of like my therapy i'm just like what else can be my new year's resolutions because obviously you want to work on your physical health you want to work on your mental health yeah also just getting more serious about like career and stuff yeah, career sure. path be more intentional to what you say yes to what you say no to Oh, yeah. What opportunity turned down, you know? Yeah. Saying no to opportunity, saying no to money. Yeah. Stuff like that because you're like, mm, this actually does not align with it me. It won't help future me. No, it won't you know, help It's like me. you need the money now, but 
yeah just wait yeah things like saying no, even just saying no to like plans and stuff like mm-hmm. i feel way more comfortable saying no now oh yeah i've gotten so much better at it i used to really like have i mean you still get fomo sometimes mm-hmm. like i still get fomo sometimes but like i feel like I'm, i've gotten better at it. i saw this one girl on tiktok and she was crying she's like i'm turning 30 this year like when your birthday is january february <laughs> holy shit bro like you don't How even you get, get to, a chance you don't you don't to even, enjoy the new year you don't even get to marry yeah. a little bit you just hit it right away so the girl was crying she's like i'm 30 and like i i'm turning 30 and like three weeks i don't feel like i'm where i need where i need to be like there's so much expectations that you put on yourself when you when you hit like 30 you're expecting yourself to be like a yeah. super stable person and like who knows like so when many will you ever be content though like i feel like even if i am at that point in my 30s like say you know married kids whatever career is going great i feel like i'm still gonna there's yearn for always more something else like you need. i feel That's like i will never be like okay i'm good like yeah. i got everything i want no you're always gonna want more and like I think that's just human nature. So just yeah. be content with what where you are, what you have right now. That's like the best. I mean like you have to, to have. constantly remind yourself that it's like it's normal to want more all the time, but you mm-hmm. have to like stop and be like, Okay, what do I have that I appreciate right now? But then also like that's so be true. Super real. Yeah, you have to do that and appreciate what you have right now because I do that too. Like when I reality look at my check. Life. Like you have to reality yeah. reality check. Stop yourself. and smell the roses, literally. Yeah, That's, literally. Yeah. And like, but like both in a positive and negative way. Because fair, you could be 30 and be like, but I really genuinely am not where I want to be. Like mm-hmm. actually. And then but you, you have to like take on that negative like feeling, but like not beat yourself up. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you have to find like a medium like place where you're gonna be constructive towards yourself without like talking you, down. Yeah, you can just like sit down and like just get depressed about it and then like when you like think too much about things you just don't end up working on it or you Mm -hmm. don't you know like you know analysis paralysis kind of thing oh my god that's so real yeah why did i forget about that term and that is great yeah real real that is so real especially as an overthinker creators and like those people like really feel that because they're like they they seek perfectionism Mm -hmm. and like they want like yeah things to be a certain way and it just like stops you it hinders yeah. you from doing anything else and i and i seen something on on tiktok this is for like all the creative entrepreneurs out there yeah. creativity has a shelf life to like oh, you know what i mean like so to true. act on it at, in the moment because one you're gonna forget about it yep or two someone else is gonna do it yep or three like you talk yourself out of it yep. you know you have so, to like act without thinking too much sometimes when yeah. you're creative it's, it's a different it's a different space mm-hmm. i'm gonna try to eat healthier too because i've been kind of slacking dude oh, yeah, yeah my yeah, god the holiday season you know what i'm what? pre-diabetic isn't what that all you're talking about yeah i took my blood sugar okay guys oh this, you did your test no i did another oh. <laughs> so i was my mom is a nurse okay and so i was telling her like i'm so thirsty all the time like and I, i'm like saying that with my oh, giant yeah, stanley that's cup. actually a symptom yeah and she's like what do you mean she, and i was telling her i think my water doesn't work like i think i need to fix my water like i feel like like you know how like they sell those like electrolyte things i to kept telling you add like lime or a certain yes, salt yes yes to that's your water what I, thought. I felt like my water is like too plain so yeah. my body's not absorbing it my mom's like no that literally makes no sense you're drinking water you should not be thirsty all the time she's like oh do you pee a lot i'm like yeah i do actually but i'm like duh because i drink a lot, a lot of, water, of water yeah you know what i mean but she's like but you're thirsty after you drink water I'm like, yeah. She's like, okay, that's not normal. I'm going to take your blood sugar. So, like, she works at a hospital. She literally just, like, told me come in. And, like, she literally just pricked my finger for me. And I'm literally, like, borderline pre-diabetic. Like, I hit the line hmm. to be pre-diabetic. You have it genetically, too? My family has diabetes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah because it's... I'm not an unhealthy person, per yeah. se. Like, I'm not super healthy or anything. But mm-hmm. I was like, damn. Um, well, damn. Well, well, how damn, do you make that real. better? Like, how? what do you do? Um, She was saying carbs are not good. Yeah, she was carbs saying, turn Which is sugar. really sad because, like, what the hell? Just, like less you know you like don't less. get rid of all it all of a sudden when i found out i'm pre-diabetic i'm like oh my god i want sugar i started making cookies i started like i don't know what's wrong with me like it's wait, like wait. i'm so regressive like <laughs> wait wh- why would you do that i don't know shoshana like something is wrong with me <laughs> like no, she said know. oh my god i'm pre-diabetic let me start yeah, making let me, cookies let me make it worse let me make it much worse actually no. so. do you want to take ozempic because you definitely Listen, can. I like, can. that I was that thing is for the most type of girls like actually no literally i can literally do it you can do it the you can do it guess, right no literally no you need no you I'm can do joking. both and become like this I can like literally so by the skinny. summertime oh my god no free us from the shackles of skinniness of i don't want to be skinny <laughs> ozempic has a chokehold on every and i don't want to be ozempic skinny that shit is not cute you can stop bro people get no ozempic face and they look so i heard insane. about that because you lose so much fat on your face and in a short I amount have, of time no, no, no. so you have like saggy skin and i, I have way too much cheeks 
to literally do, actually get two sides. Bro, like, oh no, my god, it would look really bad. That would us. look crazy. Yeah, what about your disgusting. eyesight? Can we talk about that too? Bro, and that's probably why I'm blind because it affects your eyesight too. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, my eyesight has progressively gotten so. M- I'm literally blind, blind which is literally. crazy because you will never see her with glasses <laughs> ever or contact Bro. lenses or anything. Like she, you would think she has 20/20 vision with the way she's the parading is, around with listen, no glasses. Honestly, if somebody can relate to this because of my power of what? being able to turn on and off my vision, like I can focus my eyes and unfocus no. my eyes. Nobody gets it. I tried to talk to the doctor about it. That's he crazy. literally brushed me off like an idiot. Yeah, no. Like, <laughs> Wait, what the fuck you explained talking? that to him? Yeah, I said, listen, I don't know what else to call it, but a power. <laughs> but like, literally, I'm like, <laughs> he's like, what? I'm like, like listen, I, can- I have the ability to turn <laughs> like, on and off. Like, and, and listen, if my problem is my glasses are already, I, I might have them in my bag actually. My glasses are already so, so thick. They are so strong. Like so, they make your eyes bigger. That's eyes it's massive, that type right? of um, but let me sungla- tell you, eyeglass. My glasses, when I turn my vision completely off, like when I stop focusing, I still can't see with those glasses. Like, does that make sense to you? Right now, if I want to, I can see you in your perfect 2020. If I turn it off, you'll become blurry. I swear to God. I know nobody gets it. I know somebody has to understand them. Please. I'm actually Yeah, gonna yeah, please. guys. Please leave a comment let to know. let us know if she's, if she's said, okay. Someone said it's like a form of ADHD. Like, oh. Like it's a thing. Somebody on TikTok talked about it one time. That's crazy. Apparently it's a thing. But like, I want to know because even with my super strong glasses, I didn't turn my vision all the way off when I was taking my test because I'm like, I can't walk around with two magnifying glasses on my face. It's okay. It's if it helps not. you look better or like see better no i said no <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah so okay I how about lasik i'm just a girl huh lasik no absolutely not no i'm too scared of lasik people have said like lasik has ruined their life bro what the headaches that some people get after people commit suicide after lasik what are you talking the about they feel after yeah yeah i looked into lasik and i was like oh. the the risk i was too scared because if something goes wrong and then they feel so much pain that some like literally there are stories of people like taking their own life. That is nuts. Yeah. I Yo, ha- having good glasses. eyesight is the best blessing. Like, I feel honestly given like disabled a little people. bit sometimes. No, literally. Like it's actually like What do you mean you can't see? Like, <laughs> like what, what? what do you mean? I cannot see. It's very miskeen, you know? It's so bad. And it's like I like I sometimes turn off my vision completely while I'm driving just for fun at nighttime when nobody's there like no whatever. you shouldn't and say like, that <laughs> they're gonna say take revoke her driver's license right now <laughs> what do you mean uh what do you mean? it's I think <laughs> what you mean is like you just strain your eyes I strain my eyes exactly too like, much I, and I even I'm doing this with my glasses on That's so you're what doing I'm this saying. right now you're like it's on right now. you're my, straining I, like, your eyes right now right now they're on yes strain this way and that way like you know what I mean like Good vision and bad vision. That's my point. That's fucking crazy. So when I completely relax my eyes and they're not being strained at all, I have horrendous vision. Even my glasses are not strong enough. That's what I'm saying. Because what I want, that, that's my point. So I, when I was driving, I had my glasses on. I turned my vision off completely because I was just, you know, whatever. And I'm like, how can I still not see? Like, this is actually not, like, this is ableism. Yeah. Can you read that right now? Right now? That, my that bottle? On. Yeah. Right now my vision is on. What does it say? Duff Gordon? I can see that. Do you sound crazy? Like I know, nobody right now my vision it. is on. <laughs> like nobody understands. One guy thought I was joking. He's like laughing. At yeah, me. He's like laughing at me. Like, it's I'm not. It's not, not a joke. You. I like. I'm being serious. <laughs> He's like, ah, whatever, whatever. Like, no. Should we get into the story? <laughs> yeah, let's get into it. Because because I know you don't get it. No point. <laughs> Am I the asshole for canceling a trip because my fiance's ex and her baby are coming along? I, female, thirty two, have been with Kyle, male, thirty seven, for two and a half years. We got engaged six months ago kyle has been divorced for over five years he was married to elena female 37 they have a son grayson male eight years old elena has a toddler from a guy she met after her divorce and dated briefly named ella two and a half year old female grayson is a wonderful kid he has his room in our house and he's so loved by all of us kyle and elena are good friends and co-parenting great the problem i have is she is everywhere besides the holidays and birthdays which i understand christmas grayson's birthday thanksgiving 
Elena and her baby are pretty much invited to any family function, such as Kyle's birthday, Kyle's parents' anniversary, my birthday. Yes, Kyle invited her to my birthday, our camping trips, etc. I have talked to Kyle many times, but he thinks I'm being insecure for no reason and making a big deal about nothing. I booked a trip to Mexico for January for me, Kyle, and Grayson. Kyle told Elena that on the last week of January, we will have Grayson for an extra week since he's coming with us to Mexico. Apparently, Ella managed to ask him about our trip date and details, etc. I saw on Facebook she was posting about swimsuit shopping for her upcoming trip. <laughs> Kyle texted her and asked her if she was going somewhere that week too. Oh, she hell said- no. <laughs> she said she researched our hotel and quote, I took advantage of the same deal as you guys, so I guess we'll see you there. Haha. <laughs> I told Kyle then we are canceling the trip. He said he can't because the tickets are non-refundable. I told him then I'm not going. Yeah. I want a family vacation without his ex-wife. But Kyle thinks there's nothing we can do now. We need to address this for the future plans and be more clear about boundaries. What do I do? Am I the asshole? Hold on. So was the kid going with them? The kid Regardless was going with them, yes. Of the mom? Damn, the reality of like having a blended family or yeah. like dating a person with kids. Because yeah. it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't in terms of the father having a good relationship with the, the baby kid? mom. Oh, with the baby mom. With okay. the baby mom yeah. versus like, you know how some have like horrible relationships or whatever yeah it's just but like what goes too far because why I is know, she in my face everywhere I, know, I look i know but like why is she coming to my listen, birthday party have you lost your mind i think he's trying to put the kid first um no that is going way beyond putting mom. the kid first no why does why does his mom need to be at my birthday party at the parents at the grandparents anniversary why does she need to be there it has nothing to do with her it has nothing to do with the kid Okay, Grayson's, I, the okay. kid's birthday, yes. Yeah. Maybe even Kyle's birthday, fine. Like, the dad. Yeah. Fine. Like, if, if the kid wants to see mom and dad at his dad's birthday, fine. Mm-hmm. But stepmom's birthday, why is she there? Where I would draw the line is the vacation. Yeah, because what do I you mean? I think that but is, like, absolutely he's no. He's set up like, for her to be able to step all over any kind of boundaries that true. his current wife has. Yeah. Like, he has not put anything in place. And she said that she has tried to tell him, like, hey, mm-hmm. and then he's blaming it on insecurity. Okay, so there's been an update posted since the original. First of all, thank you for every single comment. I read all of them. Kyle came home late last night since he was working on a project with his coworker. He saw me awake and got surprised and asked, is everything okay? I said, we need to talk. I basically told him that either te- he either tells Elena to cancel her trip and establish boundaries or we are done. He said, quote, oh my God, are you still on this? Mm -mm. And said, I'll talk to her for future events. Let it go for fuck's sake. (gasps) Yeah. This is attitude towards it. Hello. Okay. I said, no, this has been my life since we met. Yeah. She and her baby are always in my hair. I get upset. You convince me to let it go this time. Then it happens again. I reminded him that last June we hosted Elena's baby's birthday at our backyard and paid for everything and you told me to let it go where is the limit will she be invited to our wedding and be in the bridal party will she be at our honeymoon will she be at the delivery room when i give birth he said we are both tired why don't we talk tomorrow i told him i can't wait until then will you ask elena to cancel her trip and tell her about my boundaries he said quote i can't make her do anything as she is no longer my wife i can tell her you don't like her and you can't stand her (laughs) happy what the fuck type of immature communication is this like that's not what i fucking said <laughs> like also now you want them to have beef like why would you want to what do you mean why I would you want to make her, that a problem that i can tell her you don't like her and you can't stand her happy yeah do you want nah, me to, he's, do you want me to knock you the issue do you want me to knock you out yeah that's not what i said no you're that's not the literally asshole. not what i said i said i don't feel like i'm ever gonna be your wife she's more your wife than i'll ever be She just doesn't like to put out. So you got me for that. If we break up and Elena takes you back, would you get back together with her? Mm. He said, stop. You know how much I love you. Why are you saying this nonsense? I asked again and again. And he said, what do you want me to say? That if I'm single, will I work things out with Elena? I guess. Okay, sir. Go get back with your wife. Go go back to your wife. Go back to your wife. It's time to go back home. Yeah. Go Go back back home. Like, thanks for the little trip. But go back home. Yeah, go back home. Yeah. I got my answer. Yeah. 
and I gave him the ring and said, I'll leave tomorrow morning. That's it. Like, yeah, literally, end of story. End that's of story. all you have to do because he clearly his heart is yeah, somewhere else. Yeah. He's, he's not even the asshole. He's just in love with his wife. His yeah. Ex-wife. That's just what it is. You no, know, he had so me true. fooled a little bit. He did not I have just me thought, fooled. I thought, like, you know, maybe he just had a good, really good really co parenting relationship with his baby mom because some there people has to do. Be boundaries, though. Like, you cannot come, you can't invite yourself to a trip. You no, know, that was, yeah, and that was crazy. He can't, like, say, like, I can't make her do anything because she's not my wife. And his attitude towards her boundary really gave it up. Like, exactly. Like, and for him to say, How would you like it if I invited my ex boyfriend to our trips? Like, just think of it like that. Like, and you know what? Y'all were intimate at one point. What? You have to, like, break it down in that way for some people to understand. Yeah. How would you like it if it was easy? You have to literally write it out for them or else they don't get it. Yeah. I don't know. He's not the Not the asshole. And I hope you find peace. Am I the asshole for leaving my fiance because my body count does not align with his traditional values? Stop. Yeah. There's no way we're talking about body count. So let me get right into the story. I, female 21, got engaged to my ex, 24 male, in late June of 2023. We met earlier that year and I thought that he was everything I've ever wanted in a man. Living in the big city alone and working my ass off while going to uni, I have met a few guys who I've messed around with, to be exact, since my first time I have slept with five more guys including my fiance. So my body count was six all in all. When we first met, he was the most amazing and loving guy I've ever met. We have talked through our relationships before each other and he didn't seem to mind that much. I have to say that he is a really traditional Christian guy who lives on a farm and I like that about him. The peaceful life he was living. We talked about everything, kids, marriage, etc. But after we got engaged, he started acting differently. His best friend and soon to be best man, 19M, tried hooking up with me before I met my boyfriend. What? Yeah. So I guess out of jealousy, he started filling my boyfriend's head with all kinds of things about my body count. For example, mm. man, she has slept with one of the F boys I know and he only sleeps with hoes. But she is a nice girl. I don't know what to think about her. And yes, I met a guy in 2022 who was exactly my type physically when we hooked up in 2022. Never seen or heard from him after that. After a few months later, my boyfriend started acting like he was entitled to my body. Even if I wasn't ready or feeling like I wanted to be intimate, he would bring up how I slept with a bunch of guys before him. Then he told me that he only slept with one girl before me. So we have had a lot of fights about what I wanted to let that go and work on our relationship and marriage that was about to start. We talked and talked and whenever I did something that was not how he wanted, he would bring up my body count. I got sick of that, really, but the fights only started getting worse. He used to tell me that I would not be fit to be the mother of his children, but in other moments, he would dream about that and fantasize our life. His excuse for saying and insulting me was that his moral and religious beliefs don't align with my past life and that sometimes he breaks out because of that. I tried to understand that, tried to work on my relationship with him, and even pleaded for forgiveness. I know, how stupid of me. But when I moved in with him, we had a fight about my body count again and again. The least drop was his mother joining the argument. Wait. Oh, in oh, exact good. words, she said, if you were some mafia tattooed guy, she would be more respectful of you. The next girl you bring home will first go through your sisters, meaning they would test her to see if she's a proper wife. That was when I had enough of this bullshit. I called my mom and stepdad to pick me up and they drove four hours to come get me. Him and his mom apologized to me, begged me to come back. But after some of the talks with my mom, I realized that things will never going to change. Even though I loved the guy and was willing to do everything to make the relationship work, after a month, he reached out and tried to mend our relationship, saying that if I really loved him, I would come back and he promised to never speak on my previous relationships ever again. Well, you know from the title that I didn't go back with him, but am I the asshole for leaving him? Absolutely not. People on Reddit think this is a fake story. I kind of get just, that. It's unbelievable, kind no, of. No, but I kind of, like, I also know that there definitely are people who live in these, like, super remote places and yeah. they live in very Christian towns and like religion is a very big part of their life so like tradition is like a double-edged sword like we talk about it and we see it on social media like okay yes there are some good things that come out of tradition but the people who are like so like they cannot be wavered and they cannot understand that like you have to look at tradition with context of like the reality of the world you live in today Mm -hmm. you know those people are dangerous and they should just stay with people who are exactly like Like them them, yeah because if not it's like yeah they will so you're gonna punish her throughout the relationship exactly it'll always become like she'll he'll always weaponize her past even though she has nothing to be embarrassed embarrassed about about or ashamed about and shame is gonna be his tool to control her Mm -hmm. and then the fact that his mom could like come and and support that and like yep. not even see her as because if this is your um 
daughter-in-law your, your daughter-in-law you're supposed to literally see her as a daughter mm-hmm. and like she's seeing she doesn't see her that way like you know what i mean like it's, it's almost like you don't deserve my son exactly That's the type of vibe and that because you're giving it's like you're dirty or you're used yeah. or whatever like and that like really old mentality is just like in a 20 something year old is so scary like yeah. you know what i mean but i get it like it's it's so far from like what we're used to we live in a giant city where people are like so liberal or whatever like you know Mm -hmm. what i mean so it's like we don't see that that relationship was not gonna go anywhere but like be a very depressing one for you absolutely yeah and he needs to find a virgin that he will respect because i don't think he respects you honestly it sounds bad but like a guy like him is gonna find himself an 18 year old who just like becomes an adult who has not been touched by anyone and groom her and that's like the scary reality of things because those kind of guys like that's what they need and that's and they need mm-hmm. someone who they can control and honestly the older you get as a woman the harder it becomes for men to like control you or manipulate your thoughts or anything like that you have way too much knowledge yeah. for them and it just and doesn't fly it's like shut up yeah what are you talking about? literally good for like, her for like yeah knowing you know yeah, that this yeah, is mom, not mom, how yeah. a relationship should be absolutely am i the asshole for calling my future sister-in-law the c word after she tried to gain sympathy with my miscarriage i'm sorry if this seems all over the place i'm just so mad and everyone is siding with her my future sister-in-law ella 30 is your typical annoying bubbly girl she's always happy <laughs> and smiling quote what? caring and compassionate my brother, 37 male, is foolishly in love with her, and it seems like the rest of our family is wrapped around her finger. My brother and I, 34 male, grew up very close. When we were 10 and 7 years old, our father passed away, and our mother, 69 female, struggled as a single mother until she met our stepfather, 65 male, who was truly an amazing person. They had our little brother, 28 male, who happened to be Ella's best friend and the reason she met our older brother. 28 days ago, my husband, Mark, 34 male, and I tragically lost our pregnancy at 22 weeks. And it was devastating then, and it still is. I haven't been ready to talk to my therapist yet. This was our first pregnancy that progressed this far. So we were filled with hope. And since the last, I made it clear that I didn't want to talk to anyone and that I didn't want any visits. However, Ella keeps sending deliveries of food every now and then with stupid ass messages and quotes that say stuff like you are cared for and quote, we're here for you, thinking of you. It infuriates me to hear Mark commenting on how nice and thoughtful she is. Last night, she asked me if she could come over with my mom and my brothers to quickly discuss something about their wedding she apologized saying she knew it wasn't the right time since the wedding is only a month away and this conversation couldn't be delayed any longer in essence ella wanted to postpone the wedding for another six months and make it into a small affair hosted at a friend's place and since she briefly explained the situation to the vendors they are willing to change the date at a minimal cost to quote her she said i don't feel like this is the best time to have a wedding i really want you at my wedding party and i suspect she won't want to be around people asking you what happened as yeah. if she knows what I want or don't want. Of course, everyone started going what off about fuck? how this is such a great idea and how sweet that was of her moving a special date for her just to accommodate me. What made me snap was what she said. Quote, whenever you feel up to it, we could have a girl's day and get you a new dress. Mine was pink, made specifically to fit my growing bump. I screamed at her and said that she was a cunt looking for sympathy at my expense and that I hoped my brother and everyone could see her for the conniving and manipulative piece of work that she was. That the only girl's time I wanted was with my little girl who isn't with us anymore. All of them were stunned and she ran out crying. My brother told me to seek therapy and my mom and little brother just left this morning. My husband told me that while he understood and shares my grievances, I shouldn't lash out on innocent people. That she only wanted to help. So Reddit, am I the asshole? Yeah, you are very much the asshole. Like, I get it. You're grieving. What happened to you was very serious. You were pretty far along in your pregnancy. And... I also get that like when you have a miscarriage, you're you're still you still have those pregnancy yeah. hormones and your hormones are a little bit out of out of whack. And yeah. the things I even hear about like postpartum like psychosis, like yeah. people literally lose their minds yeah. for you know postpartum. So I'm just gonna try to blame it on that. Like maybe you're just not in the right mindset right now. Yeah. Um, She's taking everything this girl does. Yeah, like, like I don't know why you're She's- so bitter towards her because from what it seems like she's just trying to you know be nice to you and help you through this moment what do you mean she's sending you food like that is just going out of her way to be nice to you like we're here for you i guess while she's grieving maybe she doesn't want any positivity like just let me be alone and let me be miserable 
let me get over it myself. Mm-hmm. But I think she could have addressed that to her, said Definitely. that to her. For sure. You know, instead of fucking lashing out and calling her a cunt, Miskeen. Okay, so there is an update. Okay. So we have a comment from the brother, actually. Oh, yeah. sir, what, yeah. are yeah. what are you doing here? Ariana. <laughs> Ariana, what are you doing here? He found the post. So oh. He made his username victim of evil sister. <laughs> oh my God. So he goes, Hey, I'm the big brother, Jesus Christ, Rachel. The next time you want to try to make yourself the victim, like you always do, do it on a site that I don't use almost every day. This is like a movie. Like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> you can thank Ella for being the only person, being the only reason. Yeah, I've even kept a relationship with you because she has been that tolerant of your garbage. You've made it no secret that you hate her, but hey, smart of you to try and leave out the fact that she's black and how you called her more than just the C word. But I think Wait. letting everyone know the actual words you called her oh, would okay, not I don't be like her whatsoever on this sub. I'm not on your side Can at you all, fucking imagine? At all. Now. What a twist. I'm not no, on your because, side. Excuse me. And no, I you... won't understand what you're going through. Oh my God. That's crazy. No, because no. Yeah. But I'll verify for everyone that you're a bully, a racist, and an asshole. <gasps> and you always have been. Oh. And way to mention Ella's miscarriage, but not mention your own response to it, which was an eye roll and a smirk. And then and make an offhanded offhanded comment about how Ella should have been more careful because you thought her working out of the house was bad for the baby. So Ella also had a miscarriage. Okay. And she was not as graceful about it towards her. She said she kind of rolled her eyes at her and said, well, it's almost your fault because you're working out of your house. Oh yeah. God. What an That's evil crazy. bitch. Yeah. She said, you know, he said, you know what's bad for a baby? A garbage person like you. <laughs> he said, delete my number, delete mom's number, delete Ella's number and go rot. Holy What a shit. plot twist. What a story. Because I was on her, her side. I was kind of like, poor when thing. I first heard it, I was kind of like. I mean, fuck, like, okay, like, she's going through something and 22 weeks is pretty far along. Like, yeah, that's like, you know, like, you could be showing at that point. So that's yeah. like that you're very hopeful, especially if you've had, um, like, trouble, like, trying to have a baby. Yeah. But. Nah, fuck that. Fuck and don't come to my wedding, too. Fuck you. You are actually exiled. Poor Ella. Like, she's I know. really out here trying her best. Yeah. To make Ella, it work. Ella, you are a better woman than I will ever be. Yeah. <laughs> The first sign of dislike from anyone, it's actually Especially fuck when you. you know deep inside it's yeah. because that it's because you're black. black. For that you reason, know. you know when people Bye. are like that. Bye. Get out of my so. face, even. Oh. You are the fucking asshole. No, there's always two sides <laughs> to a story. Go right is my favorite. From her perspective, we're like, right? oh, Miskeen. And then you he writes it. And then it literally, like, there's uh. always three sides to every story. Yep. Yep. The truth, yours and theirs. Go rot. Am I the asshole for telling a friend what her tattoo really says? Oh, no. Throw away. Friend group knows my main account. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. I, 37 male, went out New Year's Eve with a group of friends. And the group had some friends of friends, basically people I've known in passing. One of them, Andy, 39 male, brought his girlfriend, Julie, 30 female. Julie decided to show a tattoo she got last week. She rolled up her sleeve to show it, and she announced proudly. It said, strength and beauty in Chinese. Oh, no. It was on her forearm, and I almost spit take. (laughs) Now, I have to explain I'm half Korean, but people have mistaken me as Hispanic, so I don't really look Korean to most Westerners. Mm -hmm. I'm also not fluent, but conversational in Korean and able to read. The tattoo was in Hangul characters, and it definitely did not say strength and beauty. Julie got upset at my spit take and asked what my problem was. I said, it's not Chinese, and it doesn't say what you think it does. She got even more mad and said what I would know. What I would know. Like, what would you know? Like, what do you know? Yeah. not even Chinese. (laughs) (laughs) Can you imagine? Someone tells you, what do you know? Shut up. (laughs) <laughs> like i explained i was korean american can read korean and what it says is not nice i asked her what happened at the tattoo shop and she said she always wanted to get asian characters and went to a shop and saw a chinese guy in the shop and demanded <laughs> he be the one to do her ink oh good i asked julie and andy if julie did anything that could have pissed the tattoo artist off she denied it but andy confessed she was super pushy about it and kept saying she wanted him to do it over any other artist in the shop because he he would be used to characters plus a few other statements mm-hmm. by this point she was crying and not enjoying hanging out for new year's eve she wanted to leave wanted andy to take her on the way out she asked me what it said <laughs> i was just like okay so what does it really mean yeah. like, i said it's like the worst thing you could call a woman it's like bitch but the but worse 
She just burst into tears while walking out. After the two of them left, the rest of my friends said I was a real jerk for spoiling her new tattoo and I could have made something up or not reacting. Yeah. I had to explain that the word used is a really cultural faux pas and to see it on skin is shocking to the highest degree. Yeah. And the fact I was sipping on a beer when she revealed it only made a spit take impossible to avoid. Well, this morning I got some messages from friends saying that I should really apologize to Julie for traumatizing her about her tattoo. I feel like I feel like this is ridiculous. Like, it's a really vulgar word on her arm. And if I had that on my skin, I'd like to know too. But everyone else thinks that I should have just complimented her instead. So Reddit, am I the asshole for revealing to a friend what her tattoo actually says? Okay, I don't think you're the asshole because I genuinely think he was actually shocked and he couldn't hold in his... Uh, reaction because imagine you saw like Busha or something on somebody's <laughs> yeah like Rasha like, on somebody's dude. arm like you know and they did it and no one's were like it means peace and love are you okay like, uh, first of all the tattoo artist that did this to yeah, her he, she should go back and sue him yeah. Like sue him, sure, make him pay for your removal. Or or cover oh. it up or something. What the but hell? I know the think... evil that you needed to, to have in your head to do this to someone. Yeah, that's really fucked up of him. I don't know what she said to him or like how she was acting. Maybe she was literally out of pocket. She pointed at him and yeah, said, you're and doing my tattoo. Yeah, else was like white or something. Yeah. Else. She's like, nope, the Asian and all Asians speak the same language. And yeah. Like, it sounds like she offended him. Yeah. But like... I don't think like what does an apology do for her? It still says what it says. Like exactly. get over it. You're grown up. You should woman. be thanking him. Like, you should be saying thank you so much for actually being honest and with else me. Someone would have told her. Like, yeah, someone, like you're gonna find out sooner or later. And that you actually like, fucked up. She's not a baby, okay? Yeah, you're a thirty year old woman. Get over it. Let's let's be let's be. Uh, Are you embarrassed? Let's fix the problem. I think you know she's I mean? embarrassed. Yeah, I she's probably embarrassed. It like sure, it's not even in Chinese. Said my new Chinese tattoo. Giving so giving white, white and like just naive, Ugh. ignorant. What do you mean? Like, it's in Korean, miss. It's not even Chinese. Okay, so there's an update. My friend contacted me a day later and apologized for responding to me the way that they did New Year's Eve. They said that they were more worried about the New Year's Eve party being brought down that night. But after sleeping on it and getting back to work, most of them realized they too would have wanted to know if they got branded with a vulgar word. So now she can fix the problem. Go fix it. You look dumb. Like, it's giving so dumb. Go, yeah. go sue him and then go fix it somewhere else before yeah. he ruins it again. Well, that's, that's it. All. That was a good, that was <laughs> that a really was funny episode. ending. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, that's, this is your reminder to always triple, quadruple check yeah. what, if you're getting any type of language tattooed language. on you. Yeah. Double, quadruple check literally what it means. Do not only take one person's I don't advice. I really know why people get another language that is not Me theirs. too, you know. Like I get them. like Arabic because it's so beautiful. I, like, yeah, I, I think know, I like the the Arabic, writing, but I guess yeah. people can feel that way for other languages yeah, too. True. But I, I just don't understand if it has no real connection to you. Arabic is like does have a connection to our language. Yeah, that's the thing. But like a white person getting it, Chinese is is it's wild so to weird. me. It's like why? Yeah, like oh, I just I just like the font. Like okay, I just girl. think it looks really pretty on my arm. I don't know. I think it's off. Like I don't it know is why off. You, why you need to get that on? It you. is it off. Has nothing to do with you. But I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm being like. I don't know. I guess you live your life, but I don't see the like you look no, kind of silly. No, absolutely. There's like no correlation at all. Yeah. Like, did you go to China? Like, did you like, fall exa- in love yeah. with the country? You, like, yeah. what is it? Did you just want to be story, I guess. unique and different? Anyways, we hope you guys are having a great New Year's so far. Yes. And, you know, happy New Year's to Health everyone. and wealth and success to everyone listening. Yeah. Thank we you so much you. for following us, yes. you know, into the New Year. Make sure to... Follow us on Spotify, leave a rating, review, comment, give this video a like, Mm -hmm. subscribe on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Don't forget also to send us your scenarios and your Am I the Asshole questions, anonymous or not anonymous, over to cuethecommentary at gmail.com. We'll leave it in the description box too, but send us your Am I the Assholes. We will be making a whole dedicated video for you guys. Yeah, read or write in. So that's Mm -hmm. what we want to do. See you guys in the next video. Bye.